Today, we're looking at one very simple program that does one very simple job, but I have a feeling that you may not have heard of it. This is LSOF. Now, being LS in its name, you can probably work out that it's going to be listing something. What it's going to be listing is open files. Now, you might be wondering, what's the point of listing out open files? Like, why would you ever care about that? Well, under Linux, files are more than just documents and things like that. They can be things like devices, pipes, sockets, directories, all of these are going to be represented as files on your system. And sometimes those being opened by certain processes may cause problems when other processes try to access them. For example, with my webcam. Webcams can only be opened up by one process at a time or more generally just USB video devices. So I know that my camera is going to be slash dev slash video zero. Now, if we go and pass that path into LSOF, this is gonna give us some sort of result. In this case, it's going to be FFmpeg. Now with my current setup, that is correct. If that was saying OBS instead, I would actually have my video chain broken because what I'm supposed to be doing is actually loop my camera back into a separate device. So FFmpeg is what I want to see there. Now, open file in computing terms has a very specific meaning that is a little bit different from the English definition. So if I go and open up my zshmp inside of something like vim, you might think this file is open. It's not actually open though. What is being done is this file has been loaded into memory. So if I do an ls of on my .zshmp, as we can see, nothing is actually returned. So the only point where this file is going to be opened is when we go and save this. Any well-designed program is only going to open up files when it actually needs to. Even in cases like, say, you modify the Alacrity config and then it does a live update. It's not always keeping that file open, it's only checking the file when something actually changes. So LSOV isn't going to be useful for many well-designed programs, except in cases where, like my FFmpeg script, I'm intentionally keeping the camera open. What it is great for is as a debugging program. So let's say we have a file known as data, and you're writing a script that does some sort of operation that, let's say it modifies or just reads the data, or it does something with that file. And every time you run LSOV, it says, this file is open, and this file is open, and this file is open, and every single time it says this file is open. Now you may have just been super lucky and hit the exact cycle where that file actually was open, in which case, maybe go and buy a lottery ticket because you're very, very lucky. But in most other situations, what you've probably done is forgot to close the file. Now, whether that's a really bad thing very much depends on what you're actually doing. If you're modifying the file and you forget to close it, it may lead to some corrupted data. If you're just reading the file, it's not as big of a deal, but if you try to say, run a second instance of the application, then if it's trying to read it and that read is locked, then that program won't actually be able to do it. You might run into some sort of bug and think it's an error with your program when in fact it's a completely different error. Now you don't just have to check by the file name, you can also check by the process name and the process ID. Now process name is going to be considerably more consistent because process IDs change every single time the program launches. So for example, if I go and do ls of dash c, this is going to be for the process name and then I pass in obs. obs is opening up all of these files, I'll run it again so you can see it better. That didn't actually help. So it's got all of these libraries open, all of this other stuff. Actually, that's going to be scrolling forever, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but we can also go and do it by the PID. Now, I don't actually know what the PID of OBS is. So let's go and check in HTOP. Go to OBS. OBS is PID 42214. So if we go and run that again, ls of dash P this time, 42214 that prints out the exact same data. Now, this isn't going to be useful in my case, but if you're using a system where there are currently multiple users logged in, it's some sort of server or something like that, 
if you just want to see the processes owned by the current user, that can be done by passing in the dash U option and then passing in the name of the user. In my case, that being Brody. And I didn't show you this earlier, but if you don't include something like dash C to specify a path, it's going to list out every single open file on your system. In my case, it's going to be a lot of things, especially because I have my uh, web browser and I also have 30 open as well. And browsers tend to have a lot of, you know, random little connections going around the place everywhere. And you can actually do the opposite as well. So if you just want to list out open files from users that aren't, let's say, the Brody user, if we go and pass in the dash U option again and include a caret symbol before the name, that is going to basically mean not that user. In this case, there's nothing there. Some programs out there might be making network connections that you don't really know about and you sort of want to just keep an eye on them. So if we go and run ls of dash i, this is going to be for network connections and then passing in a 4 is just going to be IPv4. That's going to take a while to actually query all of those uh, just because there's like a lot of programs doing it. And then if we go and pass in a 6, that is going to be IPv6, and you can include both of them at the same time to list out all of them. But you can also go and filter by the port number. So let's say we want to list out every single TCP connection between port 50 and 60,000. So once again, dash I, then pass in TCP, colon, the port number you want to start at, so 50,000 in my case, dash, and then the ending port, so 60,000. And as we're going to see, this list is going to be considerably shorter. There we go. And obviously, by the same logic, we can list out something on a specific port. So if we go and just pass in what one we are using, 56,120, that is just going to list out anything on that port, which in this case is just that one connection. Now, there is a lot more this program can do that I did not even touch on. I really only scratched the surface of what it's actually capable of. But for a lot of the other stuff, it's really outside of the scope of what most people are going to be doing. And if you do need that functionality, the man page is here, but you probably already knew about it. Besides being a great debugging tool, LSOV is also an amazing tool when you're running a web server. You can go and run this to check that you don't have some random program with a port open that shouldn't have been doing that. That is one of the basic steps in making sure your server is secure. Now, if this program isn't already pre-installed, it's in the standard repos for basically every distro out there, so getting your hands on this is pretty straightforward. It's not something you need all of the time, but there's going to be that one situation where you're like, why is this webcam not working? Why is this not working? And you find out the reason why is because some random process has a hold on it. And a program like this makes that debugging just that tiny bit easier. Let me know in the comment section down below, did you actually know about LSOV or is this just completely new knowledge to you? I would like to find out. So that's going to be pretty much it for me. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon, subscribe, so only bearer pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I bumped my mic. I've got gaming channel, Brody Robertson Plays, live stream twice a week, upload about five or six YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.